Let's talk about Form Z workspaces. There is a pull down menu at the top called Workspace where we can choose between different working environments inside of Form Z. There's two main ones to choose from at the top, although there are actually three workspaces, which we'll get into in a moment here. The main workspace that we open up to by default is the modeling workspace. And if we go ahead and choose the other option, which is rendering and animation, you notice that the UI changes. So what this shows us is that there is the ability to customize the overall working UI and environment when it comes to doing different tasks in Form Z. Let's go ahead and set it back to the main modeling workspace and kind of dissect what's going on here by going into the workspace manager. So I mentioned a minute ago that there are actually three workspaces, even though only two show up as options under the workspace pull-down menu. The Edit Cone of Vision workspace is actually found under the View pull-down menu, and we can go into the Edit Cone of Vision, which we'll get into more in a later video. And this is all about adjusting and moving the camera position inside of the scene. This workspace is a window all into itself, and it takes over the FormZ UI completely, and you must exit out of this window to go back to the modeling environment. So workspaces give us the ability to customize the layout and the UI of the scene. So for example, I'm going to open the inspector palette and place it carefully into the corner here. I'm going to grab this little handle and expand the layers palette down. I'm gonna collapse the objects palette because I don't use that one very often. I might want to expand my materials palette just to see all of the default materials that are in there. And let's go ahead and collapse the lighting palette. And let's look at the clipping planes. Now, all of those changes seem minor, but they do take time to set up if I was going to do this every day. So what I can do now is actually go into my workspace pull-down menu and create a new workspace. And I can call this workspace whatever I want. So I'm going to call this my main modeling workspace because this is the modeling environment that I want to see. So I'm going to go ahead and choose OK. And now under the pull down menu, we have a new section for the workspaces that we've created. If I go back into the workspace manager, we'll notice that now we have a new list item in the workspaces options, and we also have the ability to export and import workspaces. It's always a good idea to export your workspace if you really love it, because if you were ever to have to reset the modeling environment and you want to grab that workspace again, you might want a backup copy. You'll notice that the three main workspaces are not editable. They have that lock icon next to them, and you'll see that your new one is. So if you make a change to it, say let's collapse that window, let's go ahead and open the hatch palette, have that on the screen, collapse that, something I might use more often. I can once again visit the workspace pull-down menu, and I can update my workspace by choosing the update default option. And it, you can see here that it says set the default state of the workspace, main modeling workspace, to the current configuration. And I'm going to click OK. And now the next time I open Form Z, all of these palettes will be displayed in the same state that I just saved. So that's the first way to customize your workspaces. And you can create as many workspaces as you want. Let's go ahead and visit the Tool Manager. If I click down, we can see what tools are located under the different categories. Now there's two main things that this tool manager allows us to do. We can create new tool doc palettes and we can create a favorite tools palette. And this is a handy place to store often used items that you just want to pull up when you need them. So let's talk about how to do that first and then we'll jump into creating a new tool doc palette. So you'll notice this little grid with a series of icons around it. And these icons represent some mainly used tools when we're using Form Z as examples. So I'm going to close the Tool Manager. And if I hit the space bar, it will bring up that configuration here, along with a list of the last used tools that we've used in the modeling interface. So if I switch over to the Vector Line tool and I draw a few vector lines on the reference plane, and let's go to the 3D Text Modeling tool and click and generate some text. We'll notice now when I hit the space bar that those show up as recently used tools. So this is a running list of the last four tools that I've used in my modeling environment. The top six don't change. If I want to change what's always available to me, that's when we would go into Workspace Tool Manager, and we can go through the categories at the top here and grab often used tools and place them down here by dragging them in. So let's go down to the reshape category 
and choose the offset segment tool. And I'm gonna place that in my favorite tools right next to reshape. And you can do that for as many tools as you like. You have all of this space to work with. You can move the ones around that are already in here. You can also remove them by right clicking and choosing the delete option. So all of this is completely customizable. I'm just gonna move a couple around here so that you can see when I close out of the tool manager and I hit the space bar on the keyboard, it reflects the new layout that I just made. So again, I'll go back into the tool manager, maybe put those back where I just found them and leave it at that. Now you also have the ability to modify some of the arrangement. You can turn the grid on and off you can also change the number of recently used items to a different number and so on and so forth. This is also where you can set the shortcut to access your favorite tools. Lastly, you do have the ability to save and load these favorites in a separate file. So again, if you ever move workstations and you've taken the time to modify your favorite tools, you can bring that up in another Form Z installation on a different computer. Let's take a look at the tool manager on Windows. So I'm gonna choose that option from the workspace pull down menu. You can see that it looks very similar here. I'm gonna take this opportunity to build a new tool dock palette. So I'm gonna click on that button and I'm going to type a name for my tool palette. Let's go ahead and type architecture. I'm gonna go ahead and make the size of those icons much larger and I'll choose the option to show tool names as well. So when I do that, it creates a new palette. And what you want to look for is a little box like this on your screen. And if you drag that open, you can see that it actually has the name of your palette. And now we can use this to build our own custom tool palette. So I'm going to go down the categories menu here and find a few different tools that will make sense for an architectural tool palette. So I'm going to look for the reshape tools. I use these quite often when building architecture. So I'm going to use the main reshape tool and you can drag it onto there and it shows up. And I'm going to go ahead and grab the offset segment tool. And I'm going to grab the offset outline tool. I'm going to look at the draw category and grab the vector line tool. Put that at the very beginning. And how about a rectangle tool as well? But now that I have those set up, I can also reorder them in here. So grab my vector line tool and drag it to the beginning. And I can order these however I want to make the most sense for me. Once I've done that, I can go ahead and close out of my tool manager here. And this palette will stay on the screen and it's part of my workspace environment. And it's also listed under my palettes pull down menu. So any palettes that you create are going to show up in this section down toward the bottom of the list. And finally, if you want to modify anything about this new palette that you've created, it's very easy to do so. If you simply right click on any tool in that tool palette, you can go to settings and that brings back up the tool palette settings for that. You could change the name, you can change the icon size. So if those were a little too large, you can go ahead and shrink those down and you can turn on or off the tool names themselves. So let's do a couple of things there just to update it. And we can see that update takes effect. Now, if you wanted to modify the tools that are showing in this tool palette, you can do that in the tool manager. So let's jump back into there. And you already know how to add tools, but when the tool manager itself is open, you can also grab tools and drag them off of the palette and that will delete them from it. So this is a place you go to where you want to add or delete tools from your tool palettes. And there's a couple more things that you can do when the tool manager is open. You can right click anywhere on your tool palette and you can swap rows and columns, which means you can change it from horizontal to vertical by choosing that option. The last thing you can do is delete your palette completely. So this is the place to go if you wanna get rid of those palettes. So if you like me have multiple palettes down here because you were playing around with these settings when you were creating them, just simply open that palette, find it on your screen, right click, and delete it. Thanks for watching, and if you'd like to get notified when new videos are released on this channel, click the subscribe button below and click the notification bell icon to get a notification when new videos are released. See you in the next one.